Hi everyone, this is Dr. Santos. Today I am going to talk about carboxylases of our human body in biochemistry. So, why this topic is very important because you know these carboxylases are very very important enzymes that are that are actually part of ma different pathways. But when students study them separately in different pathways, they actually kind of they don't link them together and they get confused again and again. And they are very very important medi medical. They are very very important for your USMLE and other exams as well. All the exams, including USMLE. So today we will be talking about carboxylases of biochemistry. So here I will be talking first mainly. F I will be mainly focusing on biotin dependent carboxylases okay so i'll talk about i'll list other carbo two car other two carboxylases are there i'll list them but i'll talk mainly about i'll describe mainly um, biotin dependent carboxylases so let's begin okay so what is the significance when you understand this biotin when you understand learn this topic what you understand is you will have more concept about biotin metabolism and deficiency and then you will uh, you'll understand the relationship between biotin and B12 better in pro propionic acid pathway when you understand this thing okay propionic acid pathway is a very very important pathway so we you when you understand this carboxylase one carboxylase you will be correlating with the biotin uh, vitamin B12 deficiency you will understand the concept better rate limiting steps actually carboxylases are rate limiting steps of gluconeogenesis and fatty acid synthesis so this is how you can understand gluconeogenesis and fatty acid and you will have a link kind of thing between these two as a carboxylase the common thing here between two pathway will be carboxylases and then there is a deficiency called biotinidase deficiency this enzyme actually the biotinidase actually it adds biotin to the enzymes so when this is deficient, deficient, what will happen? The all enzyme will be deficient. Okay, all carboxylases will be deficient. So then you will understand. You will have more uh, broad concept about all these things, including biotinase deficiency. Okay, so let's s delve into the into the mechanism how this biotin works. So you can see this is biotin. So biotin. It's easy. The structure of biotin is easy to remem remember. You can see the structure of biotin is somewhat look like B. If you see it, somewhat look like B. So you can remember that way the structure of biotin. Though it is not that very important for your exams, but when you memorize the something, the structure of something, so it will help you understand, retain, understand and retain the biochemistry content in your brain. So let's see this. This biotin, you can see this biotin utilizes ATP. The biotin actually is part of protein. It is not separate. It is part of protein. It, it is inside the enzymes. Okay, and that biotin, when it takes up, it takes up carbon dioxide. Okay, it carbon dioxide is added here. You can see this carbon dioxide is added to the biotin as carboxy group, and it utilizes molecular or ATP. So after it takes up this carbon molecular carbon dioxide so what it does is this carbon dioxide will be transferred to the different molecules different substrates and and that is how this substrate will convert into this substrate will convert ultimately into the product so this is one example you can see here the propionyl coenzyme a the this propionyl coenzyme a converts into malonyl coenzyme you can see this this is the propionyl and i have also in product you can see it is like propionyl coenzyme a. but what does this biotin do biotin just adds carbox it adds carboxylase it adds here carboxylase it adds carboxylase like this so this carboxylase you can notice here is the biotinated biotin does carboxylation by utilizing this molecular carbon dioxide that is why i call this all biotin dependent carboxylase as a b c enzymes so i have not written anywhere you can conceptualize that that as all biotin dependent enzymes are called a b c enzyme why does it why do i call a b c enzyme because they all utilize atp you can see notice here they all utilize atp 
you can notice in this slide they all utilize ATP and A for ATP they utilize ATP they have biotin okay they have biotin B for biotin and C for carboxylation so they utilize ATP okay biotin this all enzyme utilize ATP biotin to carboxylate the substance so you can see this is the carboxylation this is how you know biotin carboxylate and this is the only biotin dependent enzyme job of biotin dependent enzyme is to do carboxylation let's see all the enzymes together in classification so that carboxylases we can classify into two broad category so one category is biotin okay and second category is uh, non-biotin dependent enzyme so the non-biotin let let me first describe little bit about non-biotin dependent enzyme in non-biotin dependent enzyme you can see this is the very very important enzyme the number one enzyme is very very important here you can see the enzyme is gamma glutamyl carboxylase which is vitamin k dependent dependent and it is very important this enzyme is very important for carboxylation of clotting factor clotting factor 2 7 9 and 10 here the second carboxylase if you remember that's good if you don't remember no problem so this is air carboxylase the full form is amino imidazole ribose 5 phosphate t -carbox uh, carboxylase this is part of um, purine synthetic synth synthetic pathway so this is two carboxylases you come across in biochemistry which are non biotin dependent and we have four biotin dependent carboxylases you will find in biochemistry most of them they are present in mito they are part of mitochondria except this the acetyl coenzyme a carboxylase which is part of fatty acid synthesis rather rate limiting step of fatty acid synthesis is present in biocytosol other carboxylase if you see cy pyruvate carboxylase propionyl coenzyme carboxylase okay and this methyl crotonyl coenzyme carboxylase they are present in mitochondria now they serve they ser are part of different pathway they serve different the same reaction to different pathway so pyruvate carboxylase it as name suggests it this enzyme carboxylate at carboxy group to pyruvate so this is a very important enzyme and it is part of gluconeogenesis and TCA cycle in fat condition it is anapleurotic reaction of TCA cycle in fasting condition it is a integral part of gluconeogenesis and rate limiting step of gluconeogenesis now acetyl coenzyme a carboxylase I already told you it is part of fatty acid synthesis which happens during fat condition and it is mm, you know it is present in cytosol mainly cytosol okay there's other category of acetyl coenzyme a carboxylase that are also present in mitochondria so we are not going to mm, talk about that the main acetyl coenzyme a carboxylase is part of cytosol okay so propionyl coenzyme a carboxylase it is part of propionic acid pathway it is part of propionic acid pathway okay a very important the propionic acid pathway is only two step process okay the first step this is the first step of the propionic acid pathway then now second step will be catalyzed by vitamin b12 uh, dependent enzyme i want you to mm, go over this propionic acid pathway this is very important reaction and i have also video you can find in my uh, channel video on propionic acid pathway so methyl crotonyl coenzyme a carboxylase okay so this is uh, the part of leucine catabolism basically catabolism okay and it is present in mitochondria it actually carboxylate the leucine so these are the uh, carboxylases bite independent carboxylases that are very very important to know and this is non-bite independent carboxylase the gamma glutamyl carboxylase which is very important now these are the carboxylases you can see together okay this is the source of this picture now you can see cytosol cytosol in cytosol this acetyl coenzyme a carboxylase is there okay so in cytosol this acetyl coenzyme a carboxylase is there and this acetyl coenzyme a carboxylase is rate limiting step of uh, fatty acid synthesis acetyl coenzyme is converted into malonyl coenzyme a 
now these are the reactions other three reactions they happen mm, they happen in mitochondria you can see pyruvate it converts into pyroxaloacetate so oxaloacetate you know it is in, in important part of krebs cycle when it is in fed condition okay in ma in hepatocyte fed condition this pyruvate converts into oxaloacetate and oxaloacetate supply is very important to carry out to keep to keep tca cycle to make tca cycle keep going this oxaloacetate supply is very important okay and in fasting condition oxaloacetate when pyruvate converts into oxaloacetate ultimately oxaloacetate through gluconeogenetic pathway it converts into glucose now propionyl coenzyme a it is i told you it is a very important part of propionic acid pathway the first reaction of propionic acid pathway this propionyl coenzyme a converts into methyl malonyl coenzyme a now methyl malonyl coenzyme a will be converted into succinyl coenzyme a which ultimately joint tca cycle and then catabolized it is catabolized so this methyl malonyl coenzyme a concentration rises in vitamin b12 deficiency so you can study propionic acid pathway then you will understand this complete context very nicely okay for the time being just understand that propionyl coenzyme a is converted into methyl malonyl coenzyme a carboxylase oh okay now third reaction you can uh, fourth reaction you can see methyl crotonyl coenzyme which is an intermediate in leucine metabolism is converted into beta methyl crotonyl coenzyme a with the help of biotin dependent enzyme methyl coenzyme a carboxylase so here you can see this two reaction is very important in biotin deficiency or um, a defi an, an inherited in uh, in one error of metabolism where biotinidase enzyme which incorporates biotin into the enzymes enzymatic protein when that is deficient what will happen is your bite uh, that the patient will present with the presentation of biotin deficiency and in that condition when you check the blood of those patients those patients will have this ac is very high those patients will have hydroxyvaleric acid is very high you will find very high hydroxyvaleric acid and also you will find methyl crotonyl glycine you will find so hydroxy remember hydroxyvaleric acid you can find in such patients very high and then hydroxypropionic acid two things hydroxypropionic acid hydroxyvaleric acid and other acids are there as well this all things you will see in the suspicion so this is all about this class so this is very important topic you i want you to um, uh, learn this very better you can take the note of this everything and then you can uh, integrate the concept of different pathway together so that you will have a you know integrated concept in the biochemistry so thank you thank you